this first stage, media. Actually, before we get started, well worth just picking up the fact that you can go back to your project manager by clicking here and changing your project. Or you can click here to go to project settings. And actually, before we bring in any media, that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at our project settings because to, to get the best out of DaVinci Resolve, we need to tweak a few things here. So first of all, what's our timeline resolution going to be? Now, it depends if you're working with 4K media or whatever. Um, DaVinci Resolve is very good at automatically scaling. So if you have got UHD footage coming off your Inspire uh, X5R camera, then you're going to find that that's fine. UHD scales directly down to HD. So actually, it's fine to keep it as an HD if you're delivering that way. Um, so it's up to you. Let's just, for the sake of it, move it up to the Ultra HD. We're going to stick it into a 25 frames per second timeline and play back at 25 frames per second because we're in PAL land. So for those of you who are working elsewhere and shooting in different frame rates, obviously, you know, America's, you might be shooting 30 frames a second. Uh, actually, you might even be shooting, you know, 60 frames a second, but probably not in 4K if I remember rightly. Um, so, you know, 24 frames a second, obviously, it's a sort of cinema frame rate. So depending on what you want to do, change that up there. Make sure everything else is just left as it is for time being. That's absolutely fine. Um, again, I'm working on a fairly basic system. I don't have any special, really any special graphics cards other than the ones that come with my computer, which actually is a Mac Pro with dual D700 uh, processing uh, units. So it's nothing really special. I haven't got any special Mac, uh, you know, Blackmagic decks or anything like that helping um, power my, my graphics, my interface. Otherwise, it's all fairly straightforward there. The next thing I would come down and change is camera raw. This is quite a big one, actually. Um, so we're going to be working with Cinema DNG sequences. So we need to go to the Cinema DNG settings. So come up to the top right, click your camera of choice, which would be Cinema DNG. And you've got decode quality. I leave it full res. Player quality, I just leave there. Decode using. This is the key one. I change this to project. And then here I get to choose the global project settings for my clips, for my media. So I want to decode Cinema DNG not as Rec 709, but as Blackmagic Design, and then it automatically changes to Black Design, Blackmagic Design Film for the gamma. This is going to mean your your clips are going to look quite bland, quite dull, quite flat. We're going to tick highlight recovery, and we're going to drop sharpness off. The camera itself is incredibly sharp, and I don't think you need to add sharpness immediately, but you can later as well. So. If you want to do that, you can, but I tend to turn it off for the time being. Those are the settings that I like to run with to begin. And I will come back to that briefly later on, but these are my global project settings for Cinema GNG Media. The only other thing I'm gonna do, color management, I tick this off. Use Mac Display Color Profile for viewers, I turn that off. Again, the reason I found for doing that is that I was quite happily working away on some clips, color grading them to my, my liking. I then exported them, and when I looked at the exported clips, they were awfully flat, and I thought, oh, that doesn't look quite like it should. Why Why is that? And it's to do with the, the display color profile. So you want to get rid of that, trust your scopes, and then your footage pretty much comes out as you want it to. So again, that's the way I tend to do things. The only other thing I'm going to ask to look at or get you to look at is general options, optimized media. This is quite key. This is where it lives. And I will come back to it in a minute. But essentially, this is the format of optimized media you're setting here. So what I normally do is just leave it to choose automatically and then give it a format that I'm happy with. So ProRes 4, 422HQ works absolutely fine for me in most cases. And if you go to the working folders, you see here the cache files location basically here is where we set where our cache files are going to go. Now, they're currently going to my boot drive, my SSD boot drive, which is absolutely fine, but you, they do get quite big because this is where your optimized media is going to live. So if you've got a lot of projects with a lot of optimized media, you're all going at once, you're going to be filling up your boot drive space. So it, for, for sort of peace of mind that you're not going to fill up your storage, I recommend just going to browse and then finding a different drive to put that on. For today, we're not going to bother, but that's what you'll want to be aware of when you're optimizing a lot of media. Uh, there is an option for you to delete optimized media very quickly. So I would always recommend that once you're finished with the project, just delete your optimized media because re-optimizing it doesn't take very long and it's a non-destructive process for your, from your original media. So you're fine. Just bear that in mind. We'll come back to it briefly later on. 
going to hit save. In fact, actually just worth mentioning as well that uh, if you go to presets, once you're done with your settings, if you hit save or save as, you can then give it a, an actual workflow preset or sorry, a, a, a project settings preflet, preset for your workflow. So like here, I've got Arial Raw 4K that as a preset. So instead of me having to come in and make all my little individual adjustments, I can just load up my profile that I like and hit save and get on with it straight away. So we're gonna just save the settings we have made and now we're ready to start bringing in our media. So the media tab, as it might suggest, is where we do exactly that. We're gonna bring in our media ready to start working with it. So in this instance, I'm just gonna bring in some clips from the Blenheim Palace job that we did and I showed you a few earlier. So browsing to my media folder where I have now exported all my DNG sequences from CineLight. Here they all are waiting for us. I'm gonna bring in just a few to, to get the, the taste of it. So I'm gonna bring in these three, sorry, three, these six, <laughs> these these six folders here. So these are all my DNG sequences. Right click, add folder into media pool. I also believe you can just drag them in. There you go. And DaVinci Resolve automatically goes about recognizing that there's a sequence of DNGs here. You can hover scrub through your clips. You can actually make them a bit, bit bigger if you want to. So we can start hover scrubbing through you can actually double click them. You can say so you can bring them into the viewer. You can set ins, set outs, happy days. You can actually look at the metadata, which is all down here. You can turn the metadata off. You can turn the audio off. You can bring them back. Lots of good stuff there. So you can see meters, you can look at waveform and you've got all your, as you say, your metadata down here. So you can see, see bit depth 16. So there we go. Anyway, we're, we're quite happy. We're just gonna bring those back because I want the whole clip to come in and it's all ready to rock and roll. So we're very, very good in a good position here. You can see they've all gone kind of a bland color, uh, especially if you looked at the H.264 clips that we brought up earlier. So they're ready to be graded. So now we can progress to the next stage, which is editing. And actually, before we do that, this is where you optimize. Before you go to edit, this is when you optimize. So the first thing you'll, you'll do before you do any editing is right, so either right click the individual clip or select them all and then right click and simply go to this drop down, which is generate optimized media. I'm not gonna do that today, but I would definitely suggest that from a from a, a smooth playback point of view, if you're working on a slow machine and you wanna get the very best, especially when you start adding effects and color information, you're gonna start slowing things down. It's gonna to struggle to play it back at normal frame rates. Um, as you should see here, what we'll actually do is if I'm playing back this clip, for example, and I wanna just play this back, press spacebar to play back, it's not quite playing at full resolution, now it is, so it's playing back. So the great thing about DaVinci Resolve is we can't do this in After Effects. You know, we're playing back here at 25 frames per second, 4K RAW, and it's playing back at 25 frames per second. It's playing back at real time. Very, very good, very, very good. And easily I can drag through and say, okay, I wanna, I wanna trim to here, I wanna trim to here. You cannot do that with After Effects. Okay, so we're gonna optimize our media. For, in the most cases, I actually even know on a fast machine, I do that anyway. So generate optimized media. And actually, if you go up to playback at the top, you'll see that use optimized media if available is ticked. Okay, so that's great. And then this is the option here, uh, delete optimized media. That's where once you're done with the project, you just hit delete optimized media and it will wipe all of the optimi optimized media for that project from your drives. So you can rec reclaim a bit of space. So once we're in here and we've got all our clips, they're all optimized because again, annoyingly, the optimization process does happen in the foreground, so you can't do anything else while you're doing it. So you've been away, you've got your cup of coffee, you've come back, everything's optimized, and you can check it's optimized by going to the list menu, optimized media, none. Okay, so I've got none. If, if we have got optimized media, it would tell you that there was optimized media available and what resolution it was in, depending on what settings you chose over here. So optimized media, so if it was optimized and it was original, you'd see original, half, quarter, one eighth, one sixteenth, etc. And it would be made in the ProRes 422HQ codec, because that's what I've selected there. If you don't see the optimized media when you first turn into this list view, on the header bar, just right click, go to optimized media, tick, and then you'll, you should see this column pop up. Okay. So that's the media import window, quite straightforward really, once you get to, to know, it's a bit like a media browser, you find your clips, you, you select your DNG folders, you bring them into your media pool, and once they turn up, you can then start loading them up individually, you can mark your ins, you can mark your outs, you can check that's the clip you want, you can actually add metadata, I believe. 
I might be wrong. I thought you could. Never mind, if you, you don't really need to, to be honest, but it tells you what frame rates you're working in, etc. Okay, so we're gonna move over to the edit tab now. 